All right. Looks like I'm live. Hi, everybody. I'm here, Aaron here in the Bowtie Treasure Studio. I am uh, just making sure all the tech's working. There's always tech, right? I have a lot of moving parts, so I like to showcase a lot of different things, guide you along my process. So hope you enjoy that. I'm live here on YouTube tonight. If you're joining over off of Facebook, let me know. But uh, I think this is going to be my last live of the month with Easter coming up and some guests coming over and things like that. I may not be able to come live for the next two weeks. So I hope you have a good rest of the March. And in fact, tonight we're going to be featuring an Easter uh, stencil from Dixie Bell. You can see it on their website and uh, I'm going to feature that today. I have this really nice, oh, really nice. I have this vintage tray that I thought it would be fun to do a little project with you. So tonight we're going to put a transfer on there, give it a nice little Easter vibe. So hopefully that's something you're interested in and uh, we're going to have fun tonight. Let me just close a couple things so I have plenty of room to work with. Um, but yeah, say hi if you're watching. If you're watching the replay, let me know as well. It's always nice to know who's dropping in. Uh, tonight, my feature transfer Dixie Bell product is, it's the Happy Easter transfer. It comes with two little parts. I've done a little trimming on this bunny one just so that it would fit in my design. So pretty simple, but we need to build up the paint before we're even ready to use these. So stay tuned for that. I'll put those off to the side because we have to get there. Um, let me show you real quick what um, the previous project looked like. I'm going to click on that right there. There we go. So this is the picture of it saved uh, real fast. Because if you ever paint over somebody else's art, it's going to have raised. So I painted it, I sanded it lightly so it had no more texture of paint. And then I did two coats of bonding boss. This is after one coat. Uh, so pretty straightforward. You can still see through a little bit. I can figure out. Um, but just follow the instructions on the bogging boss, which is pretty much paint, let dry at least four hours, paint again, and let it, let it go 24 hours before you paint it. And we're there. So that's my goal. Let me show you, though. I thought it'd be fun to do a little bit of um, um, AI, artificial intelligence. You know, nowadays you can go to Pinterest and search what people have done. So I asked AI to help me out a little bit. So I put in some search terms and this one was like Easter or wood tray with Easter colors. And anyways, it made a little nice Easter egg scene. And it was kind of cool to see what it did with the wood box. Not that I'm using any of these as far as like the picture or anything, but I also told it to put Happy Easter on it just to see what it do and did. And that's why some of those things look kind of weird. You can see Happy Easter on there. Um, but yeah, that was kind of cool just to get some, I was really looking for color inspiration too. So that's kind of cool. Here's another one that I did. And you can see that, uh, let me see, did it switch up for us? I'm not sure if it actually switched. Um, you're supposed to see a preview of my software, but I don't think it's changing. So yeah, that's kind of unfortunate. Um, let me see if I could switch a different way. Okay, that was trial one. Let's try this one. So this is the other picture. Again, you can kind of see the colors happening. Now it's on the slideshow, so I can't stop it. But then I finally fine-tuned my my uh, in, in my words, and I told it to do reds, teals, and blues. And so the last two are kind of my color inspiration. Again, these are just AI. Uh, things that I typed in for it to tell to give me a visual and I like the distressed look I kind of like the stripe idea, but I think I'm gonna go with um, Reds then probably and the colors I have are Peony pure ocean and the Gulf and I'm going to go through those colors Pretty much light to dark and I can, there we go Those are the three colors and we're gonna go light to dark with those and I'll probably use my um what do you call it? I'll probably use my heat gun. Normally I wouldn't, but so we can escalate this project quickly, I'll heat gun it so we can move move through the, the different colors. Um, I'd like to do some distressing. I think it needs to look old and worn. We might do some, I'm going to say waxing, some shading on it. But that's the fun of tonight. We're just going to develop it together. 
Um, I hope that you'll enjoy that, that concept of working on it. Uh, I really don't want to do peony as the finishing color. In fact, the other color I have nearby is pink champagne. It's a light, light pink. And I thought if I need a light color, that's what I'm going to pull out um, for this project overall. So let's do that. Let me, I'm going to move my camera down so you guys get a great view of this tonight. Not my laptop. Definitely need to see my project, right? And I'll move that back. Yeah, because we don't want project. And I have a bucket of water so that as we go through projects and everything, we can um, move those around. So one of the things that I don't want to stress here, or I want to not worry too much about, is I want to just get color on there, but I don't want to totally fill it in because uh, we really just need to, because I'm going to layer this. So feel free to use, I would call it almost more of a dry brush technique where you're just putting a little bit of paint and just don't worry about filling it all in. That white bonding boss is may peek through and that's perfectly fine. So we'll let this peony be our base color. I want this to peek through the overall aesthetic. I will eventually, if you can see, I did paint the back, but I don't know if I'm going to worry about that tonight just because I don't, or during this live, I don't want to have to worry about wet paint on the top and the bottom. So I'll come back later on after the top is dry and we will do that. So notice how I'm just I'm not reloading a lot of paint on my brush, just hitting it really quick. <clears throat> not having a lot of paint will also help it dry quicker. I'm using currently um, Dixie Bell's oval um, flat medium. You could obviously use other brushes, but this gives me a, a reasonable amount of space without having to do too many brush strokes like if a flat small would be a little bit more extra work, but could work. I am paying, paying a little extra attention to the direction of my strokes on the main tray part, but on the handle part, it's kind of hard. I found it difficult to get a smooth finish, but I try my best. But keep in mind, if, if we use the inspiration that I just showed a while ago, we're going for distressed and kind of rugged, so. It was kind of fun just to see the AI try to figure out what I was looking for. It did pretty good. Um, again, you can, a lot of these tools, you can just keep changing your words until you get closer to what you want. Of course, you could always go to something like Pinterest, but I got exactly what I wanted. Um, and once I was on the right track, it honed it in really well. So technology is pretty amazing these days. All right, so that's color number one. I'm gonna keep a wet rag around so that I can keep my hands fairly clean. I'm gonna, going to, um, I'll just soak that brush in some water and we'll get a different brush out so not to mix the colors too much. So the next one we're gonna use is Pure Ocean. And don't forget, like I mentioned, we're gonna heat gun this real quick. I don't want to put wet paint on wet paint, so let's give it a, I'm going to give it a quick dry just so that it's a little easier to put the next color on there. It shouldn't take long for us to do this. And that's another reason I'm not doing the top. If I was painting a large piece of furniture, I wouldn't have to do this. By the time I got to one end, the next end would be dry. But the heat gun does help. Just don't get it too close. I'm looking for anything that's shiny to go away so it's matte. I know I got a fairly dry surface. See how I'm kind of, I like to wiggle the head so I'm not burning up one space too much. I'll just move that around. Shouldn't take long. Just looking for any other area. A heat gun's really nice to have around. I use it for obviously things like would you bend and Would you bend would be kind of cool here. I didn't think about that, but all right, good enough. There we go. Coat number one down. So we're going to go in now with pure ocean, same technique. And the nice thing about the, uh, this one's 
my dog chewed up the end, so I had to sand off the end in case you're wondering why it looks weird. But the nice, about the nice thing about the flat medium is that it does fit within the container, the eight ounce container. Okay, so same technique. We're going to just, we want peony to show through. So maybe in some areas we might not even go all the way across. I didn't sand well enough. You can see that oval from the original design. That's all right. I'm not uh, really trying to make fine art here. This is a craft project. DIY so that's all right I think by the time I put this stencil on there it really won't be an issue but if you're really trying to be perfect give it a better sand than I did love this combination it's so cool and maybe after we're done we can go back and look at the original and see how we did to the AI um, if you missed it Along the bottom is a reminder of my latest YouTube video. If you recall last week, we did the Red Buffet. That's now on my YouTube channel. And I can show you pictures here in a little bit if we have some extra time. So yeah, see how I'm just leaving a little bit? I got to remember where my camera is. I kind of move things around tonight, but I apologize if I ever get my project off camera. So we're just leaving bits and pieces, almost as if we painted it 100% full coverage and then we sanded it back. I'm doing it a little bit more via brush. All right, again, just looking for some places to breeze in some color don't put tons of paint on your brush when you're doing this technique you're just going <clears> to <throat> totally cover an area so that pure ocean is working great and uh, like i said i don't mind it if i have some of that bonding white bonding boss showing it's a good reason why i used white bonding boss and not gray because i wanted the white to peek through a little bit or it wouldn't wouldn't be a problem if i did Hope you all are doing well where you're at. Beautiful day here in Pensacola, Florida. Beautiful first thing is day of spring, I think. It did not disappoint. A little cooler than normal, but. All right, just looking to see if I missed anything. I don't think I did. All right, put that bucket. I could reuse the brush over and over again, but since I have the extra brushes, I'm gonna go ahead and go that route. Let's put heat gun on that. We're moving along really well. We're looking for any wet areas. We want to make everything look dry. And then we're going to put our last color on there. The heat gun is nice because you can get this project done within an hour. And I'm waiting for all the colors to come together before I decide what color to use with the stencil. Good. It doesn't have to be perfectly dry, just so I'm not mixing paint. So we finished with Peony, Pure Ocean. Now we're going to move to the Gulf. And um, we'll use another flat medium. Get some paint on that brush. So notice how I loaded it up. I'm not going to put that much paint on down, but I'm going to just wipe a lot of that off. That kind of helps create that dry brush effect. So I'm just, I, I want paint on there, but I don't want it to be overloaded. Okay, so on this one, maybe what we'll do is we'll create kind of a, a vignette element. Hi, Patty. Thanks for watching tonight. Glad you found us over here. 
I'm going to put this color mostly in the middle. And that will create a little bit of a kind of a vignette effect. Careful as you put the paint down not to put down too heavy or you're going to get a big blob on the end. Not that it's a problem, but I'm trying to be careful. I really do want more in the middle. We haven't um, really figured out how much sanding I'm going to do. If any, I may not even sand at all. So I'm not sure how that's working out, you know, trying to stay in the middle only. I'm still kind of not sure about that. This is what I was talking about right here, where you put too much brush or too much paint. Then you get this like, and you got to almost blend that in. So a lot of this again is very much experimental, just seeing how it's going to go down. I think I'm going to go ahead and go all the way across, but just not heavily, heavy across. I just feel like it's looking too, I want it to look like it's been painted over time and slowly worn out over time. So we're just going to, The first time you put the brush down is when most of that paint's going to go down, so it's the trickiest part. And it wouldn't be the first time that I have also painted something and come back even with the first colors and reapplied it just so I can get more layers. That helps keep it uh, unified by trying, by not introducing like five colors just go back to one of your first two and reapply it and it just gives more of a layered look using the edge of the brush just looking for places to apply that color so i might hit the middle here more than the edges i don't want to wipe out all my color i have everywhere so sometimes we would call that uh, more or less just a dusting so like right here Put more on and then out here just kind of a light amount i've done this technique many times um, i'm not sure if i have a name for it dry brush probably with me my first go to um, and it works on home decor furniture furniture is a little harder because it's a bigger canvas So you can see right there how that's coming together. You're just trying to mute things down. This color is doing a good job of that. All right, so we have this one more side. I'm going to turn around here. So you... I like having the peony in there, so I might not wipe it out too much, but maybe we'll hit the edges harder. This project, you can see when I bought it, I didn't realize, see how that's curved? When I bought it, this side was broken, so I sanded that down. And um, yeah, but that's okay. So that's one reason I'm not trying to make this super nice is because it's got some flaws anyway. So let's keep it almost aged. All right, so that's three colors of paint. Peony, Pure Ocean, and the Gulf. Without those three colors, we really would not have this overall look. So I think that turned out really well. Now the next thing we need to do is figure out the stencil. Well, actually the next thing is put a little heat on it. We don't want that. We don't want the middle wet. So I'm going to give it a quick, a quick uh, dry. Just so that and it's funny, I, I totally did not sand enough. You can see the original artist's um, layers, which is okay. I think if you saw this tray, you'd probably like, oh, there's probably a painting on that. And you would be right. And what I'm talking about, you can see still parts of the original design. So if you don't want any of that, give it a really good sand. Maybe get bound around real wood. I still had to paint the back. Haven't done that yet. I'll do that off camera. And I don't have to do the same dry brushing on the back. It can paint a solid color. But most people aren't 
I mean, I don't know how most people can see the bottom of that, but that that's what it is. Okay, let's pull out the stencil again. This is the Happy Easter stencil. You can see it on Dixie Bell's website. I thought about not using the bunny ears here. Uh, let me see. But what I did was I cut this bunny shape. It was rectangle, but I wanted it to fit in kind of an angle here. Let me bring you guys a little closer. Hopefully that helps. So I wanted to kind of do something like that. So maybe what we'll do is let's tape off let's tape off the bunny ears. This is a good way of making sure I don't accidentally paint in there. I'm just going to put some blue painter's tape where I don't want the tape paint to go. So anytime you're dealing with a stencil and you're trying to not cover an area, painter's tape does a really nice job. And I'm just going to go ahead and cover all of it up. So no mistakes, no chances there. And that almost creates my sticky for putting it down. So it'll be something like that. I just want the bunny to be jumping over the words, and I think that's cute. If the tray was any bigger, I, I thought about doing like mirrored bunnies, but it's, there's not enough room to do that. Now, one of the favorite brushes I have that I like to use is Dixie Bell's Rounds. Is it Round Small? Yeah, Round Small. It's got almost a flat tip. You can see it there in my camera, if it'll let me focus. So I like that for stenciling. If you wanted to, you could almost even like hold it tighter so it's nice and compact. But I, I want a little bit of that texture. And so I think we are going to use some pink champagne. And I think I'm also going to use some pink champagne to add a little bit more highlight to the overall piece, if I remember that. So let me get that out. Haven't opened it in a while. All right, so let's move the bunny out of the way for now. I don't always... Um, you can put some light spray mount on these stencils to keep them down. Um, I don't normally do that. But I'm just going to use a little bit of paint. And then also use my hand to hold it down. One of the things you might want to do is get a little board or paper off the side and just kind of spread that paint around a little bit so it's not so heavy when you start. All right, so we're just going to pounce this into it, okay? Let me just work a little closer to y'all. There are some parts in the type that will probably need to be filled in. Um, but I'm not sure that that will even be that scene. So I'm going to keep this board off to the side. You can brush, but remember when you brush, you're, you're basically scraping paint underneath the stencil. So this is why pouncing is a good idea. You can also use a foam um, sponge, something like that would work. And... Right here, I'm getting close to the edge. This is where you could tape off so you don't get close to the edge. This is a fun project. Kind of makes you happy doing something, something festive for the holidays. Can we use festive for Easter? Is that okay? Or do we only use festive for Christmas? All right, I'm gonna put a little tape on this. I feel like I'm just gonna put a halo outside of my stencil. Need a little bit, a little bit more wiggle room. There we go. I don't want it to be fully covered, so I think that's enough for now. Let's pull this off. Ta da! And the sections I was talking about. Let me get a smaller brush. Um, Something that'll work. So right here, let me show you. So right here, you can see how the type's not filled in. So I think this brush is still too large. Okay. We're going to use just a little touch of paint. And I'm going to fill this S in just with some dabs so nobody can tell that the stencil had to leave that open. That's cool. So just a little dab. So the dab will do you. We're not being perfect here. So you see how I'm filling in those 
I don't know if it'll even pick up, but I'm filling in those count. The, these are called counters, the negative space in the type. And uh, the stencil really can't, you can't leave that open. Okay, here's one right here. And I'm just pretending like there's no touching. And so since this is cursive type, you would normally um, fill all that in. I don't think the um, E is supposed to be touching, so I'll leave that open, but I think I got everything else. Put a little bit more dabs there. Okay, so that's looking great. Now we're gonna come back with a bun A. Put that brush to the side. Remember, I want I cut I cut this stencil, it was rectangle, but it wouldn't fit if I did that. And I'd like the bunny to be jumping over Easter. So I am going to put some tape towards the edges that are really close so I can be a little bit more free on my dabbing of the stencil brush. But that's the main reason I'm putting this down and also to hold it down, it doesn't hurt. I think that's good enough. And we're gonna go back to the same color using my little pouncing. If you need a smaller space, you can get a smaller brush or smaller piece of sponge. The spray mount will keep things like these little flowers down a little bit more, but right now they're not doing too bad. It's a cute little design. I know it's a little late to be to promoting a product, but I'm really not so much promoting the product as much as I am having fun for an upcoming holiday. So maybe you can get this stencil for next year. Or for a project you'd like to do on Easter, maybe with some kids or family members or something like that. I think I would like to go over this with a little sandpaper and we'll dry it first just to knock the shine or the newness of the paint down. All right, I think that's enough. We'll take a look at it. Obviously, we can always stick it back down if we want to do more. So cute. What do y'all think? There she is. How cool. I'm glad I took the ears off. They didn't really make sense since I had a bunny rabbit there anyway. All right, so let's give this a quick dry. Because I would like to throw a little sandpaper on it. See if I can tell if it's dry or not. Since you're not putting a lot of paint down, it shouldn't take long to dry. All right, that's great. Let me get some sandpaper. I think so. I've got 220 here, and I've also got some 80. 80 might be a little overkill, so we'll try the 220 first. This is from my surf prep sander. You can see the holes. All right, all I'm doing right now is just giving it, one, some horizontal lines to match the paint, and two, just to knock down, knock down the shine a little bit. Shine is such the wrong word. Newness, I want it to be a little bit more rustic and not so new looking. So some of the paint's gonna come through. It's gonna feel more authentic that way. All right, so we'll just, Wipe that off a little bit. Wouldn't do too much. So you can see now that some of the stencil has lines and, and it looks more worn. I think that's better. The other thing I mentioned we can do is I'm going to take another flat small and just again dab into the the paint. Is I'm I'm going to go in there and I think I'm just going to kind of highlight some of the edges. I'm just dragging it sideways. I think the white, actually pink champagne, gives it a little bit of a fresher touch, and which seems very appropriate for this holiday. So it's going to look white only because everything else is dark. But just, I like that. I like that look. Oh, so sorry, I keep getting off camera. You see how that's working out? So we'll just add it in a few spots. Almost just a, just a dusting. Just to highlight, put 
puts them on the corners. Almost like a faux distressing. I'm not putting any right now on the actual flat part. I want this to illustrate almost like the colors worn off too white, almost like back to. And I'm not really going back for more, so hit those edges. Not much paint on this brush. Touch it real quick, just touch, just a touch. And I'm, this is what I would call dry brushing. My brush is dry, not much paint on there. Now that the, I haven't really gone back to the paint again, let's kind of go back and dust the whole surface. I'm not sure I'm putting much down, but I'm putting some down that's giving it just a little bit of a, I'm not even sure what the word is. Whatever that is. Now, some next steps that you can use on this, you could come back with a wax and hit those corners. I think that, I think let's do that. Um, we don't, going across my studio here, we don't really do wax around here. Not that we can't. I'm looking for a color and if I find it, we'll jump on it right away. And that is my stormy seas would be perfect right now. And I just found it. The nice thing about shading that I like to do is that I can choose any color that I want. And so we're going to use Stormy Seas. This is just going to give a little bit. Okay. Infamous drop it on the floor technique. And we're just going to use this to. I'm, I'm only doing this because I want to experiment with you to see if it's going to give it a little bit of a cool style. It may, it may come back to haunt me because right now it's nice and fresh and clean. So you do this if you think you need it. I just think it needs a little bit more of an authentic kind of aged feel. So the Stormy Seas is like a dark teal with black in it. Get some corners here. And maybe for now we'll just do the corner. Notice I'm misting. I think I need a smaller brush than what I'm trying to do. I'm going to use a one inch Dixie Bell's one inch artist brush. I just feel like I can get in there a little bit better. Hopefully you can see that. I'd be curious since I do this enough, if any of my followers and watchers have tried this. So there's the, there's the corner there. I think it's, I think it's working. So let's keep going with it. Go all the way around. So this is one of Dixie Bell's artist brushes too. And I'm just gonna put a little bit all the way down the, almost like over time, they just didn't get this thing cleaned enough. So it just keeps getting dirtier. And we'll just keep going all the way around. Use as little or as much as you want. And we're gonna use the one inch brush to be our blend, or basically our shading, vignetting. One of these days I'll find the perfect word. You're just blending, shading, um, softening those edges. You're moving brush strokes, feathering it out. Keep a wet rag handy because you might find you had too much paint and you, you can use a wet rag or a damp rag to erase too much paint, too much shading, so working great. In fact, I'm going to get my rag out. I don't know what I did right there. Yeah, somehow or another, I got too much paint on the side. Kind of weird. All right, I hope that concept makes sense. If not, you can definitely look at my YouTube account under the playlist of shading, and I've done this a lot. Of. So. Do you see how that just gives it a little bit more of a moody look? To give you an example, let's do it on the side too. Brush. I 
they keep going over here to the side and disappearing on you. So you see how I just did the corner? That's just adds a little bit of depth right there. Let me knock out some of that white in there. I'm not putting it on the whole piece, just where I think dirt might have built up over time. Once you missed it, I usually don't go back and missed again unless I'm trying to add some water dots, kind of creating some texture, which is something you can do. All right, so yeah, just come back and notice I'm discharging my brush. Just look for anything else you need to fan out. Sometimes I get a little heavy with this and um, it, you might do a test before you do your whole piece just to see if you like it because it might dry darker and you wish you had done another color. So that little bit of aging just kind of brings it all together in my opinion. I love how it turned out for sure. What do you think? So we took this tray in just a matter of, um, what was it, 40 minutes? And converted it to, um, if you remember, this was our, nope, that's not it. That's the before. And uh, now we have this. So what fun. Great stencil and it's just nice and the right size for this project. So happy Easter, everyone. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Um, don't forget, if you haven't seen it already, you can check out my latest project, which I painted last week on my Facebook Live. It's now on YouTube. You can watch the whole process there. And uh, this one's uh, looked out, looked really, uh, looks great. And I'm just happy to share that with you all. So definitely check that out. All right, I think I'm done here, you guys. Thanks for joining me tonight. And uh, like I said, I think this is my last live for the month. We'll catch back, you, catch back with y'all uh, probably the second week of April. Um, I'll be up in up in the north during Easter, so I'm excited to see some family and hang out. So until then, thanks for watching. I'm Aaron here in the Bowtie Treasure Studio. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you later.